Right, Shalom. First, I'd like to give all praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahawashai, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and honor to you brothers out there in the highways and the byways teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. And um, I just want to go into, you know, more, more, yet more edification and more proof that salvation is only for the seed of Israel, which is the seed of Isaac. Which is the seed of Abraham, all right, the, the most highest friend, all right, and um, you know we ain't gotta <laughs> stretch the imagination or do no create nothing crazy. It's plain in the scriptures, man. All right, it's just as plain as, as saying Noah had three sons. All right, we just gotta go into the scriptures, and it, it it's, it's it's plain. It, it ain't, it's not in a dark saying. When the Lord declared salvation unto the nation of Israel, when he declared his mercy unto the seed of Abraham, the Lord didn't declare it in, in a dark saying. All right. The Lord said it plainly and in truth. All right. You see, you people in your darkened minds that's trying to twist the scriptures around some other way. All right. So let's read what the scriptures say. This is Luke 1. We're starting off in the in New Testament and we're going to go back into the prophecies. Luke 1 and 46, and Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy, all right, which is going to be the key to this whole lesson. His mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has shewed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. <laughs> Listen to this now. He have holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. All right. <laughs> so Mary is making it clear that the, the child within her, the purpose of that child was to holpen Israel in remembrance of the mercy. As the Lord spake unto uh, uh, Abraham and to his seed. All right. Which that seed is Jacob. All right. So if you're an Israelite, you, you are of that seed. Now, what I want to do is quickly jump down. Because Mary made a statement and then. Zacharias, all right, he went into the same thing, all right, from 68. He says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people. Now, who are the people of the Lord? The people of the Lord, according to the promises and the covenant the Lord made with Abraham, would be of Abraham's seed, which we know to be Isaac. And unto Jacob and unto the 12 tribes. That's the people of the Lord. All right. The Lord made a, a covenant with Abraham that unto Abraham's seed he would be a God and they would be his people. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us. Who's the us? The Israelites. In the house of his servant David. All right. That, 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 that's why when, when um, Yahushua quizzed the Pharisees, he said, Whose son is Christ? And they said David's, all right, because it's it's known that the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, would spring forth from David's loins, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. So the Israelites are going to be saved from their enemies, and the enemies of the Israelites are the other nations, point blank period, beginning with Esau, that's the, the, the uh, prime en enemy, the number one enemy, the arch enemy 
of the nation of Israel. Satan. And from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. So whose fathers were promised mercy? Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The Lord made a covenant with those men beginning with Abraham regarding their seed. And to remember his holy covenant. The oath to which he swear to our father Abraham. All right, so this is not rocket science. This is not hocus pocus. Okay, this isn't even a riddle. This is plain English that the, the gospel is hinging on the oath which the Lord swear to our father Abraham. Now, Abraham is not the father of all men. All right, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. All right. Now, I want to go to Jeremiah, 33rd chapter. All right. As, as, he, as he spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets. Now, Jeremiah 33 and 1. This is the gospel. This is the consolation that Israel was and is waiting for. Right, that great salvation, that everlasting salvation that the Lord promised in His in His infinite mercy towards us, to, towards the seed of Israel, that though our, our sins be as scarlet, we shall be made as white as snow. All right, this is Jeremiah thirty three and one, and I'm going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to read the whole chapter, and it's it's not a dark saying; it's it's plain. What, what the scriptures is saying here, okay? You don't need to pull out the, the, the crystal ball with this one, okay? Let's just listen. Let's, let's just read, okay, and comprehend. Jeremiah 33 and 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me and I will answer. Now, who, who, is, who is he talking about here? It's going to let you know who it is that he's asking to call unto him. Call unto me and I will answer thee and shew thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel. Okay, why is Yahweh? The God of Israel. Yahweh is the God of Israel because he made a covenant with Abraham that he would be a God unto Abraham's seed, which is Israel, the seed of Abraham, his friend. Concerning the houses of this city and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. All right, because at this time we, we were in Babylonian captivity. Or going into. All right, they come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury, and for all whose wickedness have I hid my face from this city. So the Lord delivered up Jerusalem into the hands of the Chaldeans because of the, their sins. The Lord delivered. Israel into the hand of them that hate them, the enemy. All right, just like when Yahavashai was on the scene with the Romans, and just like we are delivered into the hands of our enemies today, the, the, the so called American man, the so called British man, so called French man, which they're all Edomites. Behold, I will bring it health. So the Lord is, is prophesying. That although he is breaking Jerusalem down, the day would come, the day we would we should look for the day when the Lord would bring health. The Lord would bring it health. So now we understand what the it is that the Lord said that he had formed and established. <laughs> okay, it's Jerusalem. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them. <laughs> now now, did, does not the scripture says that Yahweh Shai 
cometh with healing in his wings. All right. I will call, it says, I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. But did, did, does not the scripture say, Yahweh shall said, the truth shall set us free. Sanctify them through that truth. Thy word is truth. Is it not written that Yahweh Shai is the prince of peace? And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return. So the day was going to come that the Lord was going to uh, uh, um, remove the, the, the two kingdoms, Judah and Israel, all right, from captivity. And will build them as at the first, meaning Jerusalem was going to be built up as in, our, as in our days of glory. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity. Now, <laughs> listen up. The Lord said he would cleanse Israel from all their iniquity. That's why Yahweh Shai came to take away the sins of the world. The world is talking about is Israel. All right, because through Yahweh Shai and his sacrifice, the Lord is going to uh, remove all sin from Israel, beginning with the elect. All right. And so therefore, ultimately, all Israel. All right. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy and a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth. All right. Which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. And, 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 and that's going to be the kingdom of heaven. When the Lord established the kingdom of heaven, man, and the Lord bless Israel. When these nations see how the Most High bless Israel, man, they're gonna they're gonna pray they're gonna be in awe. You know what part, what form of power is this that can that can uh, uplift a people in such a manner that can deliver a people that can take a people from the the lowest favela and put them among the stars. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, again, there shall be heard in this place, which ye shall say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man, without inhabitant, without beast. The voice of joy. Yeah? And, and that's going to be in Revelations, the 21 chapter, when new Jerusalem is established. The voice of joy. And the voice of gladness. That's why the scripture says there shall be no more tears. You read Revelation 21 chapter. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. All right. The voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of armies. For the Lord is good. For his mercy endureth forever. And who is gonna, who are going to be these brides and these bridegrooms? That are going to be rejoicing. That's Israelite men and Israelite women. Rejoicing for the salvation of the Lord. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We're going to sing, we're going to sing praises unto the Heavenly Father. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. Now this, this hasn't happened. Alright. Ever since the time... Of of um of Jeremiah, man, the, the land of Israel has been in turmoil. Okay, thus saith the Lord of hosts, again in this place, which is desolate without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof shall be an habitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. All right, in the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale. And in the cities of the south and in the land of Benjamin, you know, which I, I look forward to, to the land of Benjamin. I being a Benjamin myself. And in the places upon about Jerusalem and in the cities of Judah shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that telleth them, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised 
unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. You see? And that's that's what the, this, this is what the Messiah came to fulfill. These promises. That's why the scriptures in, 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 in the New Testament speak about these promises. And the Lord is going to perform that which he promised. And the agent of that uh, of that uh, uh, manifestation is Yahweh is the Messiah. See, the, the Christianity would have you think that the Messiah came to do something completely new and profound, which had not been spoken of before. Meaning he come to save heathens. No, that's not what the promises. The, the Lord never made any promises to the other nations for salvation, man. The promises were made unto the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The covenants were made unto the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. All right. It says, in those days and at that time. All right. So this, this is a time that Israel was looking towards. And not just the, the Judah, as in Judah, Benjamin, Levi, the kingdom of Judah, but all the nation of Israel. All right. Will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David? Now, who's that branch of righteousness? That's the Messiah. That's Yahweh Shai. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. All right. And this is a name where she shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. All right. Now, I guarantee you that <laughs> these Christians, man, they don't want to bring these scriptures up. They don't want to bring these scriptures up. All right. It says in those days shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name where she shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the Lord, the word of the Lord came unto uh, Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, If ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season. And these are ordinances that the Most High have set up laws of this universe that cannot be broken Esau no one can overturn these laws then may also my covenant be broken with my servant David or David my servant that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne and with the Levites the priests my ministers as the hosts of heaven cannot be numbered neither the sand of the sea measured so will I multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites that minister unto me. So even <laughs> David alone has much seed. How much more, you know, the nation of Israel as a whole. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Considerest thou not what this people have spoken? All right, saying the two families which the Lord have chosen, he have even cast them off. And that's, that's the spirit that, that uh, Christianity comes in, like the Lord has done away with the nation of Israel, that the Lord ain't, that the Lord didn't have a plan, the Lord didn't have a promise towards the, the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel to deliver them, to to unite them once again under the Messiah. <sighs> Thus they have despised my people, that they should not be no more a nation before them. Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob. See, the Lord is still dealing with a seed. A racial group, an ethnicity, a lineage. And David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Okay, the Lord is, the whole point of the Messiah was to perform the mercies promised unto the seed of Abraham. Point blank period. Okay. 
So with that, I'm going to say Shalom.